All right, so now that we have our roles table, our user roles table, we can go ahead and start defining some roles and then assigning them to our users. So I'm going to, going to go into roles and say show table data. This will come up as empty. So I'm going to go ahead and just hand create my roles. So I'm going to have the first role of user and oh, <laughs> in my last step in my last video, I forgot to set these as identity. So I'm going to come in here again and this needs to be my identity field. Update my table. There we go. So now I have an identity set for ID. I'm going to go ahead and close out TBL roles. Then come back in again, right click, show table data. Up oh, there's user false. Okay, so that took care of that. And then I'll say admin and I'll set this as true. So now I have a user role and an admin role. So now what I want to do is I'm going to manually assign that role to a user. I'm going to assign it to myself. So my user ID is two. My role ID for an admin is also two. So I'm going to take these two together then and go into user roles. And my user ID again comes from my users table. ID column is two. So I'll set this as a two. And then my role ID for an admin comes from the roles table. ID column is also two. So that was just coincidental that they were both the same, but this then will assign my user the role of admin. So now that I've set that up, how do I actually get it so that it works inside of my code? Well, to set that up in your code, you actually have to go to someone, somewhat of an unusual place. You have to go to your global.asax.cs file. And inside of here, you can add what are called application methods or application event handlers that you would put in to handle that authorization event, as it were. Um, now, working within this area of your application is kind of unusual because you'll notice that there's this application start that was declared that's actually a predefined method name. And unfortunately, the only way to find them is that you actually have to go out to MSDN and look them up. So if we uh, make a trip out to Google and let's search for our global.asax events. So I'll go ahead and we'll just start with this first one. And now this is going to Tech Republic, um, but this is actually a pretty good article. I've used this one before. Um, what they're basically talking about is all the different ways that you can handle authentication within your ASP.NET application. Um, so what you'll see here is there's a whole series of different events that you can handle within that AS or within that global.asax file. Uh, the one in particular that we're looking for is the application .authentic or application underscore authenticate request. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just copy this and we will jump back into Visual Studio and then I'm going to add a protected void method called application underscore authenticate request. Now this may seem a little loose and kind of weird to see it working this way, but trust me, this is actually how it works. Um, there's a lot of frameworks that can be incorporated into your application that basically handles this work for you, but at a very fundamental level, this is the way that it's done. Um, so from within here, you have access to things like the context and that context holds all of our information, including things like our user. So our user that we would access within our controllers exists within this context. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to override this I principal user object within our context and we're going to load it with the roles that come from our database. So to do that, we're going to need a few things. Uh, we need to get current user username uh, we'll need to set up a, a DB context so we can access our database. We'll need to build an I principal object. And then we'll need to update the context.user with our I principal. And actually, before that, we will need to um, add our roles to the I principal object. And once we've updated the context, then we're in good shape and we're ready to rock.
All right, so let's go ahead and let's start out here and I'll kind of walk you through all of these pieces. So we'll do string username equals context.user.identity.name. So that'll give us our username. And then we'll do a using statement here, WSAD DB context. And then we'll bring in my using statement for above. And at this point, what we'll do, let's see, where's a good spot? We'll do it right here. All right. Um, we need to create our principal. Actually, let's go ahead and build our principal up here before we open our context. So what we need is we need an I principal object. An I principal lives inside of the system.security.principal.i principal, well, system.security.principal namespace. Um, and this will be our new user object. Now, iPrincipal is an interface, and if you remember interfaces, um, you have to write a class that implements the interface in order to actually have something concrete to work with. Uh, luckily for us, there's also a system.security.principal.generic principle. And we can go ahead and use that generic principle to get our application up and running the way that we want. Now, the principle, the generic principle, takes in two parameters. It takes in an I, an I identity, and it takes in an array of strings. So what we'll need to do is the I identity identifies who our user is. So that's the identity part here in context.user.identity. Um, so what we'll need here is we'll need an I identity. And we can do the same type of new and we'll say new generic identity. And this will take in a string of name, which would be the username. So we'll pass that in. And now we have our identity object. Um, but then the second piece that we need for our principal is an array. And that array is an array of strings which defines our roles. So in order for us to do that, we actually do need to connect to our database first. So let's go ahead and move. Um, let's go ahead and just move all of this, all pieces here, and we'll move them after my context. But in order for us to have a string of roles, we'll need to actually declare a string array of roles up here. So we'll just declare that like that, and then this will get populated with the roles out of our database. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign roles down there, and that'll finish out that line of code. Um, it's given us a red squiggle right now because it's saying it's undefined, so we'll just set it equal to null. All right, so that puts us in working order. So now what we need to do is we need to go context dot users uh, first or default x. Actually, we'll do row where our row dot username equals username, and then this should give us back our user object, our user DTO. And then we'll say if user DTO is not equal null, then we will go context.userRoles.where. Um, and then we can say where row, row user ID equals user DTO.ID. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a few additional pieces to this. I'm going to then say select from that row, the row.role dot name, because that's what I need is an array of those names. And then after that I can do dot to array. And this will return an array of strings. So then up here we can say roles equals, and this roles is my roles variable from above that I declared. So I'm going to store in that variable all of the role names that are assigned to my user. So I'm going to look at user roles. I'm going to grab all the user role records where my user ID matches the user DTO that I just grabbed previously. And then from that collection of user role objects, I'm going to then take the role and then grab the name out of the role object. And then I'm going to convert that into an array of strings because name is a string. So then from there I can take that, store it into my generic principal, 
And then the last step is for me to go context.user equals new user obj. So that gets all of our pieces in place. So we grab the username out of the existing identity. We then set up a new array of roles. We connect to our database using our context as we've always done. We grab our user DTO based on that username. If we get an object for our user DTO, then we actually go through and we'll do the work of defining roles by grabbing the user roles for our user. We then select the name out of the role object from the matching user roles and then we convert all of those names into an array of strings or an array of those names and then we come down after our context and we create our identity with our username and then we create a new user object using our identity and those roles and then we store that in our context so that then logs us in and defines the roles for our user in one motion.